thanks everyone for coming to this talk. Uh, I want first to thank to Professor uh, Juan Carlos Mixteco. He's always looking for troubles for me. No, nobody attend this meeting, so I'm afraid of this to give the talk. Okay, thank you both for coming. Today I'm going to talk about uh, kind of phosphorus nanotubes. Um, my talk is divided in four parts. I'll start with an introduction about this uh, kind of material, the structure of black phosphorus and black phosphorine. And after that, I will talk about some of the algorithms to generate this kind of uh, chiral nanotubes. I describe uh, slightly just the methodology used for these calculations. And I, I will discuss some of the results and conclusions. And finally, I will summarize our work. And I will let you know about our current in Despite all the initial expectation uh, produced by graphene in 2004 related to the high carbon mobility, it was determined as a uh, semi-metallic structure. And this uh, avoids its uh, application as uh, in nanoelectronics, where it requires a direct bank up and a semiconductor behavior. So, that's the reason that uh, the people start to study more different or new materials. This is the case of, of black phosphorus. Black phosphorus, uh, sorry, black phosphorus is a layer in structure, and uh, it holds a semi uh, semiconductor behavior. It's uh, the most stable allotrope between uh, red and white phosphorus. It was in the sizes around. 1914 by Richmond at Harvard University. During his studies devoted to the uh, effect of high temperature or high pressure on the uh, melting point on, of white phosphorus. So this is a semiconductor at as I have mentioned, the ball band gap is around 0 0.3 B, but this uh, value depends on the stake layers. Uh, there exists some uh, theoretical studies, and this value varies from 1.5 to 0 0.6 CB. One interesting thing of this uh, material is that it supports uh, temperatures up to 400 Celsius with not a spontaneous ignition, and this is the main uh, reason the uh, study of this material. Regarding the uh, structure, we have uh, used this methodology to reproduce the cell parameters, and we found that uh, this structure uh, we have, or we can found, PP bonds that are, uh, are in the same plane, and the bond length is circa 2.21 Armstrongs. But there exists another uh, kind of uh, PP bonds, and this is comprised between two neighboring layers. The bond length is around 2.24 Armstrong. The distance between the layer is really large. This is around 5 uh, Armstrong. In this uh, image, I show you just the uh, close uh, distance between uh, two planes, but uh, the report uh, in the journal is mentioned that it's more large than this. Value. So if we have this structure, we can make a, or we can extract one, just one plane or just one monolayer. This structure can be defined by two orthonormal vectors. Um, this structure is or percent shows uh, high anisotropy and it depends on the direction where we see the structure. For example, if we see this uh, structure along the zigzag direction, we can think about this structure layer by layer. We can change the direction along the armchair direction, and we can define this structure as an apocryphal structure. So this is the main reason that the um, properties are dependent on the direction where they are measured. So there exist two approaches to 
produce this kind of uh, structures or monolayers. For example, the top-down methods or the up-down methods. The top-down methods exploit the large uh, separation between planes, and the first uh, method used to do this, uh, obtain this uh, monolayer is the mechanical exploration in 2004. It's the same uh, thing that happens with graphene when, when they have uh, a scotch tape and they produce this mechanical exploration. This uh, method is not scalable. And then it has some, uh, no, it's a, the dental shark, I don't know. Presence, the presence of residual organic contamination uh, is present in the samples. And when you have the monolayer, you need to protect this monolayer because they, there exists a, a reversible degradation when they are exposed to air, even to the oxygen. In 2014, there was reported um, the use of uh, organic solvents to facilitate the production of this monolayer. This uh, uh, use of the, the solvent has some advantage as we are kind of able to obtain monolayers of high quality, controllable size, large uh, quantities, and even the presence of the photoluminescence. So the button up methods uh, can be just classified in plasma assisted, pulse laser deposition, electrochemical, and CBD. In the case of CBD, it's not easy to make this uh, monolayer, so to obtain this monolayer because the structural instability of this uh, phosphorin avoid the use of this uh, method. Uh, I forgot to mention that in the case of the liquid phase exfoliation, it's the more used uh, method to produce these uh, monolayers. And the main reason is because uh, when they uh, produce this uh, structure, it forms a solvent shell around the monolayer and it avoids the interaction with oxygen or water. So there exists a lot of application uh, nowadays for this structure, for example, example transistors, flexible devices, fiber optic communications, thermal imaging, thermoelectrics, uh, photovoltaics, etc. And the main reason is because of the high uh, rates of the bank up of this uh, phosphorus. So we propose an algorithm to produce uh, phosphorin nanotubes. The main idea is to use the traditional method uses for carbon nanotubes. So we start with the 2D unit cell and uh, repeat it hundreds of times to get a large monolayer. Then we calculate the chiral angle comprising between the chiral vector or chiral axis and the um, zigzag direction. We represent the zigzag direction in the monolayer. Then we rotate this uh, monolayer and we select the, we select an area defined by the chiral and the translational vector. This uh, vector is along the nanotube axis. Then we roll up this uh, monolayer in order to obtain the nanotube. The nanotube is defined by the combination and of N and N indexes. It's uh, similar to the case of the nanotubes, carbon nanotubes. So, dependence of this combination of N and N indexes, we are able to get armchair nanotubes, zigzag nanotubes, and chiral nanotubes. Uh, this is the main uh, goal of this uh, work, that we have uh, able to obtain chiral nanotubes. There's those kind of nanotubes have never been reported before. So, if we have this uh, monolayer, we can, uh, so, um, we can define some um, vectors, and this is the formula that we uh, obtain to calculate the chiral angle. As you can see, in this uh, formula just depends on the N and N indexes. In such manner that if we have uh, N 
equals zero, then the chiral angle will be of 90 degrees. This means that uh, the selected area will be perpendicular to the chiral angle. Then we have the monolayer, and we make the same uh, algorithm to rolling up this uh, monolayer. And for example, this uh, PNT with 0, 10 indexes, it's easy to see that the zigzag direction is along the nanotip axis. This prediction was made uh, date from 2000 uh, by uh, some people in Spain. But as I mentioned, they never uh, considered the chiral structure. And I think that the main reason is because we have a lot of atoms inside in the, in the unit cell for the, class, the case of the chiral uh, nanotubes. We repeat this for the zigzag nanotubes, then the chiral angle is of zero degrees. You can see that in this case, the zigzag direction is along the diameter of the nanotube. Okay, those, those of these are kind of uh, nanotubes was well known, and all previous reports to our work uh, has uh, completely studied this, this kind of structure. So we make more general this um, algorithm, and we propose or we obtain, for example, a structure when n equals n index. The calculated uh, chiral angle is around 53 degrees. Again, uh, we select a uh, area defined by the chiral and the translational vector. That's uh, colored in the green. For example, 55 nanotube uh, has the zigzag direction forming an angle with the chiral angle. So the um, edge of this uh, nanotube is not perfect. Uh, you need to select, uh, the, for example, the ring that you're going to repeat during the calculations. You need the unit cell. There exists another type of uh, combination um, of n n indexes. For example, if n equals n divided by 2, we calculate a chiral angle of 70 degrees. This example is, for example, for the 510 nanotube. Again, we all can observe that the chiral angle is different. It's not 90 or it's not 0 degrees. So we use this methodology to make this calculation. We use a periodic uh, pseudo tension approach. We optimize the unit cell using GGA PV approach. And uh, in addition, we consider the hybrid as, as HSE06 functional for a better estimation of the band gap. And this is a requirement when you got a material with a quite uh, band gap. The other uh, parameters are related to the uh, energy and the force to make sure that you have a, a really a global minimum on the uh, energy surface. So I'm going to reduce just uh, the previous uh, investigation. In 2000, uh, the first uh, paper appears related to Amsher and zigzag nanotubes. And recently, 2014, was uh, reported that the zigzag nanotubes are less stable than the Amsher PNTs. The band gap and stability are dependent on the diameter values. So it's not difficult to think that if the, we increase, increase the diameter of the nanotube, we recover the structure of the monolayer. No, we can think that the monolayer is a nanotube with an infinite uh, diameter. So PP must, must be affected by the PNT diameters and the small ones uh, will be in the, inside, in the inner part of the cylinder. Okay. 
So this is uh, another paper that mentioned that uh, these uh, tangled values are comprised in a range from 0 0.10 to 0 0.61 EV. So our study considered 14 uh, structures, and this set comprised of five, four, four six uh, nanotubes, five arm chair, and five chiral structures. So the more important uh, parameter in this calculation is the uh, explore diameter, 11.3 to 20.7 Armstrong. And maybe some of you can ask, what is the reason you, you uh, consider these sizes? Because the number of atoms inside the unit cell uh, is going from 60 to 120 atoms. So you need a workstation, 25, 60 cores run in this calculation, and you need more than one, 100 gigabytes for the calculation. So it's not easy to accomplish this kind of calculations, especially for the chiral structures. So it's uh, interesting to mention that uh, with all this methodology, we were able to to reproduce some of the calculated bank values reported in the uh, previous reports. So for example, for 0 0.10 PNT, we calculated a bank value of 0 0.489, and the reported value is around 44, I'm not sure, but I think that is 44 EVs. So if you start to make these kind of studies, you are interested in the PP bonds, because if you got an AFM microscope, you can measure these distances. Or even I think that they with TEM microscope. So the distribution of the PP bonds, or are, we found that this, uh, this distribution are from 2.10 to 2.50 Armstrongs, but it's important to take, to take into account that the PP bonds can be single or double, and the range uh, is just from 2.0 2 to 2.22 Armstrongs. So in the case of the zigzag uh, structures, we observe the major distortion for the outer PP bonds or located in the outer shell. So this uh, uh, result doesn't surprise, didn't surprise us because we have the uh, report that these kind of structures are not stable. So clearly this uh, result demonstrates that the zigzag nanotubes suffer of a major distortion. In the case of the Archer nanotubes, we have 2.16 to 2.21 uh, on distances, and these values are more close related to the monolayer values. So the different colors in the graph distances and in this uh, figure for the nanotube just demonstrate or where, it, where are located these uh, PP bonds. The more uh, short PP bonds are located in the inner part of the nanotube, and the outer shell is comprised by the large uh, PP bonds. So in the case of the armchair PNTs, the PP bonds are close related to the monolayer, and maybe this is uh, the main reason that these kind of structures are stable. We repeat this analysis for the chiral nanotubes, and in the case of the 10.5 PNT, we observe that the the large uh, distance is around 2.36 Armstrongs, and this uh, bond distance can be explained like five types of distances. If we reverse the indexes, we obtain the 510 nanotube, and as you can see, we have a less dispersed bond length, and the value is more close related to the monolayer. So, this led us to think that uh, we have a structure that will be necessary um, 
be so stable as in the case of the arm chain nanotubes. So the distribution of the distances let us see, think about the distortion induced by the curvature of the, these nanotubes. Armchair and zigzag PNTs uh, hold two types of distances. Zigzag PNTs are strongly distorted. Chiral uh, PNTs hold five types of distances, but the PP ones are similar to the monolayer distances. On this bottom dotted lines are just indicated that in the case of the chiral and the armchair structures, we have less dispersed. Uh, PP bonds. And our first uh, case for the zigzag uh, structure is the 11 zero nanotube. So PP bonds in chiral PNTs, despite their twisted the structure, suffer a similar distortion as in the case of their chair PNTs, and both of them are close related to the monolayer uh, case. So the next question was uh, to uh, how we the band gap varies with the diameter or chirality. And we make a comparison or of cal the calculated uh, band gap values. For example, the dot line uh, is located uh, and it, it is located to indicate the diameter, a similar diameter on this, all of these nanotubes. And if you can, you, as you can see, it's easy to see that this is a chiral nanotube. This is again a chiral nanotube, but this is an archer nanotube. And there is almost a similar uh, diameter. For example, for 77 nanotube, we have a 0 0.61 dB band gap value. But uh, this uh, comparison demonstrates that the same diameter for the nanotubes are not uh, defined in the difference of the band gap values. So, Zigzag PNTs have uh, smaller bank of values. Even we can consider that the zigzag nanotubes are metallic. So we can conclude from this graph that the uh, chirality is torn up by the bank of, uh, sorry, is reversed. The bank of value is torn, is torn in the chiral, is torn by the chirality of the nanotube. So we expect that these chiral structures uh, are likely to be obtained experimentally. So we confirm this uh, affirmation by uh, verifying the stability. We calculate the binding energy per atom using this formula, where this included the total energy of one atom and n atoms. So again, we compare the similar uh, nanotubes displaying this, uh, this, the same or similar outer diameter. The colors are indicated that pink uh, that correspond with the zigzag PNTs, and the chiral structure correspond with the blue and black dots. So armchair again and chiral, uh, chiral nanotubes future large uh, <coughs> binding energies and the binding energy is an indication of the stability of, this, of the structure. So we are thinking that this, uh, again, these uh, chiral nanotubes will be found in the experimental samples. For example, both, both 5, 10, and 0, 11 future similar outer diameters and binding energy per atom. So the stability of chiral and armchair nanotubes are, are similar from these results. Uh, we calculate the band, uh, band structures in order to determine the um, behavior of these kind of uh, nanotubes. And we use for this um, uh, task uh, the hybrid HSE06 exchange correlation functional. And the black lines correspond with the PBE exchange correlation functional. As you can see, the main difference is in the conduction bands. In the case of the hybrid uh, exchange correlation functional, 
the banks are uh, shifted toward positive values, it means that the bank gap are, values are large, uh, that in the case of the TV calculations, the values are in agreement with the reported uh, values before in previous calculations. Interestingly, the 0, 10, and 5, 10 uh, carbon, sorry, nanotubes display direct pan gap at the gamma point. And what is the interesting thing of this result? When you have a material with direct pan gap, it's an indication that your material can be used for high speed of that transistor, even for blue LEDs or photosensors. So we calculate uh, the stroke, the band structure for this another uh, type of nanotube, and we found an indirect band gap value. So what is the idea of this uh, result, or the main uh, goal of the result? Zero 07 nanotube, my future at pure efficiency in light emission. It means that if this material cannot be used as a lead um, laser. So another thing that you have when you are predicting new materials is the thermal stability. All those calculations when you are making DFT are done at zero Kelvin. So all the experimentalists, people are asking all the time, what is the, the effect of the temperature? So you need to make um, molecular dynamics to respond to that question. So we perform or we carry out these kind of calculations. We use uh, or we fix the, te the pressure and the temperature at ambient conditions. We select a time step of two femtoseconds and our whole calculation lasts five picoseconds. So the snapshot that are displayed in this uh, slide clearly shows that the structure is maintained along all the calculation. No distortion, no breaking of the bonds, so the structure is maintained. But in the case of the nanotube with reverse indexes, we found that the structure start to uh, heavily deform. Even the bonds are breaked, uh, broken even at 0 0.7 picoseconds of simulation. So we can conclude that uh, the 10.5 PNT is not stable uh, even at 25 Celsius. So to summarize our work, the stability of 6 PNT is mainly ascribed to the major induced distortion of the PP bonds. Tidal and Archer nanotube display similar band gaps and binding energy per atom. Bank of values are turned by varying the chirality of the nanotube displaying similar diameters. We found that some PNTs filter an indirect bank up, and the thermal instability of chiral PNTs has been determined at ambient conditions. So, this uh, work has been published in the Physical Chemistry, Chemical Physics, in the 2016, and the people behind all this work are my graduate, graduate students. They are uh, studying his doctorate, Hector Noel Fernandez Escamilla and Jose Jesus Quijano Briones. So we start to study another uh, kind of uh, materials or nanotubes. In this case, we are studying double gold nanotubes to see the influence of the, maybe you can change the inside chirality or the outside chirality uh, with respect to the nanotubes. And the other thing is that this structure is, uh, has a lot of corrugation, so we are thinking that we can absorb some molecules. For example, this molecule is uh, cisplatin, that is a cancer uh, drug. So just to give you an idea where are we located, uh, we are close to the borderline with the USA, and, and our neighbor state in the USA is, is Texas. 
Okay, I just want to check my time. Okay. Just, just to, this is my ad, right? I am keeping, uh, I keep working on uh, Tile Cloud Cluster. This is my Google research, Google Academic. And we start to study when I was in my postdoc position, working with Professor Wetten, we all make this uh, um, paper reporting the ligand effects on the uh, structure and the electronic and optical properties of the gold protected gold 25. So this study considered a lot of our ligands. Uh, those ligands has our polar groups or bulky uh, groups. Uh, and we conclude that the interaction between the ligands is important. So you can get a more distorted uh, structure, I mean, of the inner core, if you got different kind of ligands. So I think that Professor John Pei, Professor Ron Chao forgot this paper, but I, that's the reason I, I bring you to your eyes. So the other uh, topic that I'm working is the polyvolin structure, structure or the prediction of this new structure. Uh, the people that is working in the field of purulence knows that long time ago, I mean like five uh, years ago, the people was trying to absorb uh, transition metals on the top of the purulence, but they observed that, that when they you absorb this uh, separate transition metals, they start to aggregate them, and you obtain cluster on the top of this furelets. This new structure is a prediction by a Chinese group. I think that in 2015, and the more interesting thing of this new structure is that the uh, methyl are forming part of the framework. So you are eliminating the aggregation of the metal atoms, and you are improving the uh, capacity of this kind of the structure to absorb hydrogen. So this uh, structure is very promising in the absorption of hydrogen. And this is a report uh, that I made this on uh, this year in the JPCC journal. The other topic that I'm working on is the, the application of these new uh, protector, tile protectable clusters. For example, we are trying to use these new materials to uh, use as uh, carrier detectors for some interesting molecules like anti-cancer drugs as cis platinum. Um, this is a, it's a structure. The structure was determined by Professor Ron Chow. This is comprised by three octahedra, sharing, a, I think that is a phase. And you can see that we obtain the absorption on the ending part of the, on the endings of this uh, cluster. So we observe that the, the molecules uh, show a better um, or a strong Raman signal for this case. We predict the structure in 2000. 13 of the gold 130, and this was done in the lab of Professor Jacaman and with collaboration with all people of the Gandhi one, I don't remember where he is, but we predict this structure. And Professor Ron Chow uh, has crystallized this structure, and we, we think that or is uh, the proof that we, we make the right uh, prediction. I also have predicted new structure like this uh, gold cluster comprising by hundreds of uh, gold atoms. And it's not easy to make this kind of calculation. You necessarily need uh, a supercomputer center. In this case, oh, I just uh, compare the, X, uh, the powder X-ray diffraction because it's not easy to get, for example, the, the, the optical absorption. but. Um, I think that is a correct model. So just we need to 
make sure that uh, Professor Ron Chow or other people in the field are able to crystallize this structure. So going to small sizes, in 2013 uh, we proposed a, a new model for course 15. And the more interesting thing is that we have an inner core comprised by one tetrahedra. And we have uh, staple motifs that are large. For example, in this new model, we, we consider a long staple. In this case is known as a heptameric staple. So uh, this is the, our final uh, paper. Uh, this is a review published in quantum chemistry. And this uh, review tried to, to give to the community the importance of the, the development of this field in Latin America or making, making by Latin American groups. So uh, thanks again for your attention and I'll be, I'll be happy to answer those questions now. Calculation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's true. 
It's, I may be that's the first calculation. Yeah, Dr. Clarice always corrects all my errors, and so it's only fair that I <laughs> return the favor. Okay. For example, the, the sulfide uh, molybden, molybden or right. sulfide but, uh, if yes. they can form nanotubes or whether they are kind of interesting. Nanotubes. Right. But uh, we forgot a lot uh, about this calculation because there are time demanding. The calculation is running around one month in a workstation with 12 processors, a 180 gigabytes. So maybe we need to first buy the license from ADF or some of the package, the commercial package, because they are more reliable. Um, I the, mean, the calculation is more difficult than, right. than, than, than for phosphorine or... Right, the, the, the monolayer the model is easy. Because you, you just need the QD unit itself, because this is a periodic structure. It's easy, but this uh, kind of uh, structure requires uh, that you consider 60 or 120 atoms. Even for phosphorus, it's, uh, it's, it's not easy. Phosphorus is not easy. Thank you. You got a question? Okay. <laughs> I have a question. Um, do you know if there's a, a chance of having interactions between those tubes, um, between the different, sorry, say between the different tubes? And if so, uh, do you think that the um, electronic conduction properties could be coupled or decoupled? Are they working independently or not? That's a good question. I never think about that calculation. Okay. It's in the same like the carbon nanotube, you get an hexagonal arrangement, right? A array of hexagonal or nanotubes in an hexagonal array. Maybe we can consider this. We forgot again about that calculation. Uh, it's surprising, but it's true. <laughs> so we we have a new idea to start a new calculation. That's true, no? Because you don't you know, find these uh, nanotubes isolated, you find in Chunks, bundles, ropes, ropes, small ropes. Right. Ropes. So we are going to consider that calculation. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, not the thank you. Right answer for this question. So join me in thanking again our speaker.